Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm coming to you from my studio. Um, I was sitting here just looking at some receipts and going through stuff for the last six months or so. Um, and I started counting and realized that in about three weeks I'm gonna be coming up on my seven year anniversary of uh, going full-time as a fine artist and so of course I started taking trips down memory lane and just sort of looking back and reflecting on the last seven years and realized that there were a few things that um, that I would do differently I would change um, I wish I knew what I know now that type of thing and I just wanted to share these things with you, um, especially for those of you who are contemplating going full-time and you haven't, uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. Um, so the first thing that I really found surprising, things. this is the thing that I did not know was going to be an issue when I started my art business, um, and that is that I would not have any time uh, to paint for fun. Um, when I first started full time, um, and by the way, I don't know if you've seen my video about why I became a full time artist, but if you haven't, I'm going to link that right down in here somewhere for you to see um, because it will help uh, maybe make sense a little bit. Um, this wasn't really uh, a, an option for me. This was something that I pretty much just had to do for myself. Um, so it, it was a little bit different for me. But when I first started out, I really didn't have any other choice. I didn't have any other job to fall back on. So I knew that this was something that I was going to have to make work but I didn't have an audience. Nobody really paid any attention to what I was doing. Um, I didn't have any demand for my work, so I created exactly what I wanted. And as my business grew and as my following grew and the more bills I was able to pay, time became a commodity for me. When I sat down in my studio, it was to create in order to pay my bills. That is your goal, really, when you work for yourself, is you need to be able to pay your bills. So what if your passion is also your job, um, but you start to get a feel as time goes on of the things that you know are going to sell, um, this may be the subject matter, the style, um, you know what is probably going to sell if you've been doing this for a while. I know what my customers appreciate seeing and, and I, I take joy in painting those things. But as far as creating uh, works of art just strictly for me or to hang in my home or maybe learning a new type of art, a new form of art. I've always wanted to learn how to do encaustic. I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to learn that. Because if I take time out and learn how to do that, or oils, or you know, collage, or something like that, taking um, lessons, doing things like that, that takes away from uh, time that I could be creating in order to sell so that I can continue to pay my bills. So uh, this was something that I did not see coming at all that I, but you know, I, I realized that I was doing that to myself. So if I had to do it over again, I would have set an intention early on and dedicated, you know, one, two, or three, even three hours a week and create for the sake of creating um, just for myself not to sell not to show anyone really just to do it for the joy of it because you know when we were kids and we created we did it because we couldn't imagine ourselves doing anything else and when your art becomes a business and 
it's serious business when you rely on it in order to, you know, to to survive. Then it 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 can you can take the joy out of it. So, what I have done to combat that is I've started taking uh, classes outside of my studio. The only way for me to create for pure joy is not to be in my studio. I can't be here and create. And that may seem odd to some people, uh, but when you live where you work, as I do, you can't get away from seeing all of the work that needs to be done. And there's always things to do that need to be done. And so whenever I come into my studio, I I have things from Etsy sitting here that I need to list on Etsy. I have, uh, I've got bookkeeping that I need to do, which I hate doing bookkeeping. <laughs> it is my least favorite thing to do, but I will see receipts piling up. There's bookkeeping that I need to do. I have unfinished paintings that I need to finish so that I can get them listed on Etsy or put them up for sale. You know, there's always something that I see that needs to be done, so it sucks all of my creative energy to, to create for the joy of it. Just It just drains me dry. So I've decided to take classes outside of my studio, and there I don't have to be distracted by work. I can be completely away from it, and I can create just for the joy of creating. So um, I'm curious to know if any of you artists who are working artists uh, do this kind of thing also. I'd be very curious to know that. Um, so that's the first realization that I've had. The second realization um, that I've had over the years is I never knew how much of a business that my art career would be. Um, you know, you talk to people who are saying, I'm going full time as an artist. And if you're doing something else, the first thing you think of is, well, that sounds really cool. You know, sitting in your studio and painting all day. I mean, who wouldn't love that? Let me tell you, uh, maybe the first two years were like that because I was struggling. <laughs> but after that, I do 50% painting and the other 50% of the time, 50, 40 to 50% of the time, I am doing business stuff. I'm not creating. I am I am doing marketing. I'm doing uh, bookkeeping. I'm doing, you know, listing things. I'm doing social media. I am working on ideas for things that will help me to grow as an artist in the future. I'm collaborating. I'm doing all of these other things that will help me in my career, but it's all business related stuff. So if I had to do it over again, I would have taken a business class early on. That would have helped me immensely and I think that I would have struggled a lot less. Somebody just a couple of weeks ago asked me to do a video on whether or not artists should become LLCs. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that means Limited Liability Corporation. It's a fancy legal term for uh, if your business is getting too big and you need to protect your assets, then you, you know, then you need to designate yourself as a, a particular business. That's all I'm even going to say about that because if I say anything else, you're going to know that I don't know what I'm talking about. I did not even know that this was something that you do. I just did this um, last year, 2018. And the only reason why I did it then was because I was talking to somebody who knew their stuff and they said, hey, the tax laws are changing and did you know that you can't deduct certain things that you used to be able to deduct as an artist? And you should be really be protecting your assets. Um, that way, if you get sued for whatever reason, because people do that, people, you know, you can sue people over anything these days, you know, that you your personal assets will be protected if you become an LLC. So I looked more into it and did a lot of research. I consulted with a tax person and I ultimately became an LLC. I 
had said to, uh, I, I wrote to this person who asked me to do a video on that, that I would, that I would do that. But if you're watching, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing a video on that because I'm not a lawyer and I'm finding that to even explain anything relevant about being an LLC, I, I would be afraid that I would A, either get it wrong or that it would uh, be old information within a few months and not relevant anymore. Um, so I suggest for those of you who are interested in becoming an LLC to just um, there is a good site called Ink File. I think it's I-N-C-F-I-L-E dot com. They are the ones that I went with when I became an LLC. They'll answer every question under the sun that you might have on that subject. So, um, but yeah, I won't be doing a video on how or why I became an LLC because I don't know enough about it other than the fact that I knew that I needed to do it. Um, so the third thing, um that the third realization that I had uh, looking back over the last seven years that is that if I had to do over again, I would have gotten over myself a lot sooner. I would have gotten over it. And what I mean by that is gotten over the idea that I can't or that I am not good enough to be considered an artist or to be in the same room with artists or comparing myself to other artists or wondering if I'm ever going to make it or just being too shy to talk about my art or anything like that. I would have just gotten over it because if you have that kind of an attitude, and I have seen this over and over again, if you have the attitude that you are not good enough, you will not succeed. It's, it's plain and simple. That's just, it's kind of the law of attraction. You, you have to believe that you are good enough. You have to believe that you deserve your place here. You have to believe in your work enough to talk about it to people, to promote yourself, to walk into that store in your neighborhood and say, I think that my art would be a perfect fit here. Let me show you some things that I have. I know that's scary. I did that, oh my gosh, the first time I did it and was told no, it about killed me. I, I was gut, I was just gut wrenching, and I thought, oh, you know, this just confirms that I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't, I shouldn't even be doing this. And you have to get over that. You you got to push past that because you're going to get that. There is no way to stop yourself from failing in this business. You will fail and fail and fail and fail over and over and over again. You will fail so much that you will want to journal about it so you can write a book on it later about failure. <laughs> I am not kidding. It is something that you have to embrace as an artist and I wish that I had learned then that whatever, whenever I hear the word no, it's just the universe's way of saying, that's not your direction. You need to be going down a different path. So you need to back up and you need to find another way and you need to go down this path. If your art doesn't belong in one place, then it doesn't belong there. You move on and you find somewhere else for it. Don't be afraid to show your art on social media. Don't be afraid to set up your Facebook page, your art page. You know, it, you have to learn early how to do it in order to be successful. And if I had done that, I know that I would probably have succeeded a lot sooner than I did. Um, I went through a lot of grief the first couple of years and a lot of head trips and a lot of self-doubt. And if I had not done that, I would have gotten a lot of places a lot faster. And, and you know, I mean, it is what it is. I'm grateful for the process. I know that everything that has happened to me has led to where I am now. But, you know, if you had that magic wand and you could create a wish for yourself, that would be one of the things that I would definitely wish for for myself is to have just gotten over that and just got on with it. So anyway, that's it. I wish I had like seven things uh, to talk about for the seven years, but 
I only have three. So hopefully those three were somewhat helpful for you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, you know to always leave them in the comments. I will try to get back to each and every one of you who asks me a question as soon as that I am able. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. So I hope you're having a good day. Stay creative and I will talk to you soon. Bye.